सिक्स पी एम पाकिस्तान स्टैंडर्ड टाइम असलकुम दिस इज रेडियो पाकिस्तान द न्यूज रेड बाय आयशा नायाब फर्स्ट दी हेडलाइंस फॉरन मिनिस्टर विल अंडरटेक अ टू डे ऑफिशियल विजिट टू रशिया फ्रॉम टुमारो फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर हैज एम्फोसाइज टू रिव्यू द रोल ऑफ पाकिस्तान डेवलपमेंट फंड एंड स्टेट ओन्ड इंटरप्राइजेज विद द कंसेप्ट ऑफ अकाउंटेबिलिटी टू सेफ गार्ड पब्लिक एसेट्स Pakistan has strongly condemned the deeply offensive act of desecration of the Holy Quran in Denmark. All parties Riyadh conference has said a tyrant Indian regime led by Narendra Modi is brazenly violating international laws in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Sixth for Justice Australia chapter has announced to hold Khalistan independence referendum in Melbourne tomorrow. and the third and final t20 between pakistan women and australia women will be played at canberra australia tomorrow and now the news in detail foreign minister bilawal bhutto zardari will undertake a two day official visit to moscow from tomorrow at the invitation of his russian counterpart sergey lavrov Bilawal Bhutto Zardari will hold talks with the Russian Foreign Minister on the entire spectrum of bilateral relations. Both the sides will also exchange views on regional and international issues of mutual interest. Finance Minister Senator Ishaq Dar has emphasized to revisit the role of Pakistan Development Fund and state-owned enterprises. He made the observation while sharing a meeting on role of Pakistan Development Fund and state-owned enterprises in Islamabad today. The minister asked for considering business plan, governance structure and financial viability of these enterprises with the concept of accountability to safeguard public assets. The gathering discussed the role of Pakistan Development Fund and state-owned enterprises in the light of new SOE Act 2022. They discussed modalities to improve governance of SOEs and line ministries and restructuring of PDF to revitalize its role to promote infrastructure in the country. Pakistan has condemned in the strongest terms the senseless and deeply offensive act of desecration of the Holy Quran in Denmark by the same Islamophobe who committed a similar act in Sweden a few days ago. In a statement, Foreign Office spokesperson Mumtaz Zahra Baloch said this repetition of the vile act leaves little doubt in the minds of the Muslims around the world that freedom of expression is being blatantly abused to spread religious hatred and incitement to violence. She said at a time when there is an increasing need for interfaith harmony and mutual respect for peaceful coexistence, the international community cannot turn a blind eye to these hate mongers. The spokesperson said Pakistan reiterates its considered position that freedom of expression comes with responsibilities. Pakistan's ambassador to the United States Masood Khan says Pakistan is collaborating with the United States to unlock a climate resilient ecosystem. During his virtual speech to a discussion at the Rice University Houston he said Pakistan with the help of the international financial institutions has initiated reforms for water conservation transition to modern agriculture technologies re- reafforestation and water management and metering he said that Pakistan is taking consistent steps to improve its power generation through diversification of its energy mix The kilting ceremony of first indigenously designed gunboat by for Pakistan Navy was held at Karachi shipyard today. Commander Pakistan Fleet Vice Admiral Uwais Ahmed Balgarami while speaking on the occasion said it is a matter of great pride to witness development of the first indigenously designed gunboat for Pakistan Navy. He said Pakistan Navy is aware of the evolving geostrategic situation in the region and will continue to enhance naval potential to counter any misadventure and nefarious designs. Park China border crossing at Kunjara Pass will be temporarily opened from Monday to facilitate crossing of important Pakistani supplies. The border crossing will remain open till 10th of next month. Earlier in the first phase Kunjara Pass was temporarily opened on Tuesday and Wednesday to facilitate local trade and supply for key hydropower projects. This is Radio Pakistan. 
The All Parties Hurriyat Conference has said that a tyrant Indian regime led by Narendra Modi is brazenly violating international laws in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The APHC leadership in a statement issued in Sirinagar said the fascist regime is using all brutal tactics including killings, abductions, torture and molestation of women to crush the Kashmiri's ongoing freedom struggle. The leadership urged the international community to urgently intervene to avert the looming catastrophe because of Indian war crimes in occupied territory. Hundreds of teachers gathered outside the Bharatiya Jantia Party office in Jammu to protest against the anti-employees policies of the Indian government. Meanwhile, the chairman of World Forum for Peace and Justice, Dr. Ghulam Nabi Fai, in a statement in Washington said, India is the biggest violator of the United Nations Security Council resolutions on Kashmir and it has no right to dream for the permanent membership of the UN Security Council. The Six for Justice Australia chapter has announced that voting for the Khalistan independence referendum will be held in Melbourne tomorrow. Representative of the Miripuri Gurdwara in Melbourne, Ravi Inder Singh, told Australian media that the voting exercises known as Khalistan referendum would be a significant step towards self-determination for millions of Sikhs around the world. Two Indian Air Force fighter jets crashed during a training exercise in Madhya Pradesh today, resulting in killing of one pilot and fatal injuries to two others. Indian Air Forces Suki 30 and Mirage 2000 had taken off from the Gwalior Air Base and crashed in Madhya Pradesh. It is pertinent to mention that the safety level in Indian Air Force is at its lowest as its over 400 MIG-21 aircraft have crashed in the last 60 years, claiming the life of over 200 pilots and 60 civilians. Saudi Arabia has decided to include provision of insurance and labor contracts for hiring foreign domestic workers. Spokesman of the Ministry of Human Resources and Social Development, Saad al Hamad, said this initiative will improve contractual relationship. The spokesman said punitive measures, including the revocation of the license of recruitment companies, will be taken in the event of failure to comply with the regulations regarding the upper ceiling of recruitment cost or any manipulation in this regard. In Ukraine, three people were killed and two others wounded after Russian forces struck a residential neighborhood in the eastern city of Kostentenka today. The regional governor, Pavlo Krenlog, wrote on the Telegram messaging app that four apartment buildings and a hotel had been damaged. Meanwhile, Ukrainian foreign ministry has announced to summon Hungary's ambassador to complain about remarks of Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Hungary has repeatedly criticized European Union sanctions on Russia. Ukraine says that various countries have promised to provide it with 321 heavy tanks. Ukraine's ambassador to France in an interview with French TV said numerous Western countries have officially confirmed their agreement to deliver heavy tanks to Ukraine. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has said the situation at the front remained extremely acute, particularly in the eastern Donetsk region where Russia is stepping up an offensive. The third and final T20 between Pakistan women and Australia women will be played at Canberra, Australia tomorrow. The match will start at 7.45 a.m. Pakistan Standard Time. Australia has already won the three-match series 2-0. The final of the Under-19 Women's World Cup will be played between India and England at Boshevstrom tomorrow. The match will start at 16.45 hours Pakistan Standard Time. And finally, the weather report. Rain, wind and thunderstorm with snowfall over the hills is expected in Islamabad, Potoha region, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Kashmir, Gilgit, Baltistan, North, East and Central Punjab and North Baluchistan during the next 12 hours. However, moderate to isolated heavy snowfall may occur in hilly areas, isolated heavy falls and hailstorm is also expected in upper parts during the period. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.